got some groceries for you. We know this, that God has uh, plans for your future. You know, this is a new year we're in. We're already in within a day of being two months already into this year. And some of you have neglected the vision board. You know, you quit going to the gym already. You've, you've, you've decided, I, I'll do it next year. But the future is still bright for all of us. We need to realize that if we're going to move into the hand of God, we've got to hear from God and we've got to respond to what He wants us to get done. I'm glad to see Ray here this morning. He's about to embark in another week with the chariots of light, sharing his testimony. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And lest you think that the chariots of light is just a bunch of hoodlums over there, there's every strata of society over there, and they all, most all of them need Jesus. Amen. And uh, we've seen through the last 15, 20 years, generally speaking, Miss Leba, uh, five to six to seven thousand people come to know the Lord, one on one prayer and a follow up with it, just because we talk to people. You know, we're not beating them over the head. Uh, Pastor Andrew this morning mentioned something that when I first got saved, I told people, turn or burn, get right or get left. You know? I told them to go to hell. That's what I did. If you don't want Jesus, go to hell. I, I, I wasn't right. You know, I, I, would, I needed the love of God. But you, you don't get that just because you think right theologically. You need to know Jesus. Jesus doesn't treat people mean. Some of y'all left me already right now. <laughs> we got faith for our future, amen? We've done this already, but if you've got your Bible uh, on your iPad or on your phone or lift up your Bible, say to the devil, was I do absolutely nothing? It is the Word of God that you hide in your heart and speak out of your mouth and joyfully act upon that will change your world and your circumstances. If your world and circumstances haven't been changing like you want them to, get more of the Word in you. Act on it. Speak it. Act on it. Amen. So, I believe His Word's got something for the future for you today. Amen. There's some good things going to be happening for every one of us. Amen. I'll get to that in a moment. But uh, I, I really want us to grab a hold of what Scripture is helping us with. There's a Scripture over in Proverbs let me take it to you over here. Proverbs 29, 18. Will you be so kind as to read it out loud with me? Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. The Passion Translation, I'll read it. Where there is no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander astray. If you don't know where you're going, how are you going to know when you get there? If you don't know where you're going or supposed to go, you will miss what the manual says, the manufacturer's manual says about you. He has plans for you. If you people quickly will wander astray if they don't hear the vision. The message says if people can't see what God is doing, they'll stumble all over themselves. My version says it this way, where there are no people, the vision perishes. <laughs> It takes people to get things done. Amen? God didn't start uh, everything in the world that he did. Man, uh, Adam and Eve, but he quickly made sure there were plenty people to get things done in plenty kinds of nations. So you have to decide to see the vision and act on it and move forward. Now, that means you need to look forward and not backwards. How many of you know that we've got a generation that was raised currently on digital instruments that has little to do really with people. Hey, have you seen this kind of thing where somebody's just walking around and you know they're looking they're always looking down. You know, used to be you could ride your bike in the neighborhood, hey how you doing? Throw your bike down and run play in the yard. Today kids want to stay on their devices. Even two year olds know how to operate a device. That, that's scary. I mean, you got people just crazily. They, 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 people, they got kids today. This is all they know. The, the only thing they know is they have a friend there. 
Facebook is proof that you can have imaginary friends. Hey. Hey. Hey, Steve. <laughs> Facebook is proof you can have imaginary friends. Are you with me? Some of you this morning have already checked out. Oh, let's just see what somebody wrote. Oh, there's, oh, I haven't heard from him in a long time, you know. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, look what, where they went. They went to the Pizza Hut last night. Oh, isn't that interesting? Who is that with him? I wonder. You know, they, they live in that land. But really, future has to do with you looking forward. Now, let me take you back for a moment. Miss Cheryl and I had a wonderful friend who went to heaven early. His wife is still alive and very much. Uh, Miss Cheryl's got a letter in our office in there from Dodie. But John and Dodie Osteen, they used to open up their services this way. And I think this is good for all of us to grasp the, the input of this. This should happen with us every day. This is my Bible. Okay, this is not a Bible, but it has Bibles on it. I understand. But this is my Bible. I am what? What it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today... Okay, let's gather. Ready? One, two, three. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, ever-living seed of the living Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Now you might say, well, I've been to church lots of times and I walk out the same. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's time for you and I to realize it's not up to a pastor to change your thinking. You need to hear the Holy Spirit. And you will never hear the Holy Spirit even in church, even in the greatest meetings where the greatest pastors are at, if you don't open your heart. You need to be willing, you know what, I'm sitting where I am today because I got here from what I thought about yesterday and what I planned yesterday. But where you are today is not where you're going to be tomorrow. You need some information to get to where you're going to go tomorrow. We need to change our perception of things. We need to look to the future. We're already two months past. We need to change our perception into things happening in our lives. Turn to your neighbor and say, things have to change in me. You can't change what's going on around you until you start changing what's going on in you. Oh, be happy. Come on. Now, let me tell you uh, quickly. The Word tells us that God is really expecting some good things in us. He's not the dammer. God doesn't damn you. He's given his best to Jesus just for you so you can understand. Here's what Jeremiah understood as a prophet. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He has some expectation more than you do. How many of you were born at a very early age? Okay, so you know that number is clicking forward all the time, you know. But with that being said, God's got something in mind for you. The Rotterham version of that says, I know the plans which I'm planning for you, declareth Yahweh. Plans of welfare, not of calamity, to give you a future and a hope. My gracious, don't look at the future like, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I know what you're going to do tomorrow. Well, I know what Pinky and the Brain are going to do, but... <laughs> <laughs> Try to take over the world. <laughs> the message says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. I don't care what comes your way. It does not have to stop God's plans working in you. So always think big. Say it out loud. Ask big. God will do bigger. 
You remember us telling you back in December and January, our friend Jerry Sabell's daughter, uh, Terry, Terry Ann, <laughs> her vision board and her, what she talked about. In fact, Steve that just walked through here, Steve Zakowitz. By the way, hello, Brenda. Good to see you, sir. The sun is home. Hallelujah. <laughs> he lives in another part of the world that thinks different than we do down here. <laughs> he lives in the northwest. Okay. How far north? Pardon? Portland. Portland. Oh, that's a different thinking. But Jesus is up there. Amen. Amen. That's right. But Terry encouraged us to get our vision boards ready and put things that you want to see in the future. Now, my wife has a big closet. She has nice things in there. But one thing she made me do in late December, January, was go in there and Ray put up this huge board of stuff and I had to get this. Oh, I needed, I needed Stacy because it had to do with a drill and, and, and <laughs> screws and stuff, you know. And it's got six holes that she doesn't know about yet, but it is, it is there and it's hanging. <laughs> she wanted it hung so she could maneuver it. But the vision board is important for you to know where you're headed. To, what are you planning for this year? You need to plan ahead. God will meet you where your expectation is. You want to be debt free? Yeah. Well, it's not going to happen just, zap, he zaps you. You've got to plan these things. Give me a better amen than that. Okay. Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. God's not slowed down one bit. He is continuing to move forward. He's continuing to do things for every one of us. And we need to get involved with what he wants done. His government will never decrease. And if it's increasing in 2022, what do you think? Now, let me ask you a very personal financial question. How many of you honestly last year prospered some than other years? All over the room. How could that be? God. And some of you prospered quite well. Hallelujah. Miss Cheryl and I got things done last year. We had no clue in the natural except that we sow seeds every day. So we believe this stuff. But if you want to see increase, if you want to see a future, you're going to have to be bold about it. You're going to have to tell somebody, here's what's about to happen. But what if it doesn't happen? But what if it does? You can't spell impossible without spelling possible. In fact, impossible is I apostrophe M dash Possible. I'm possible. It'll work. God intends to increase every part of the kingdom. You got to spend more time with Him. You got to begin to look forward to what He's going to do, trying to get things through you. Uh, we had a, a little birthday celebration for Daff and my son and Sarah the other night uh, at a place, and they had some musicians, interesting musicians, Bob. You would have maybe appreciated this. An accordion player, squeeze box. <laughs> Steve enjoys it more than you. But he was playing bass with the left hand. He's playing all these chords with this hand. And he had drum machine, sorry, Mike. Uh, but he had it going. And he had a guy that could play bells all over the place. And, and one of those long horns that are about for alpine. Yeah, it was it was cool. Interesting. But anyway, during one of the breaks, I went up to him. And you know what? I appreciated his talent and fortitude and what he had gone through to be able to manipulate not just this sound, this sound, but the floor. And In fact, I never got to play my cowbell today. I, I had one more sound over there I could have played. Uh, but, you know, I reached in my pocket. And there was a 20 and some fives and ones or something. I said, man, I just got to appreciate you. And I did this. He said, wow, I rarely get anybody come over here and give me money, <laughs> you know. But I blessed him. I want my future to be bright. So I sowed into a musician. He, God's trying to get things to us all the time. Amen. Now, changing our perspective. Here's a little side note from our friends, Charlie. <laughs> I guess it's wrong about uh, 
always to be worrying about tomorrow. Maybe we should just think only about today. Now listen to this answer by Charlie. (laughs) No, that'd be giving up. I'm still hoping that yesterday will get better. (laughs) I mean, that's where some people are. Maybe yesterday will get better. If only. Forget it. You will never progress by holding a grudge against somebody who's in your past. It doesn't work. It's not biblical to hold a grudge to somebody way back there. Get over it. Well, let's get Lucy into this deal here, okay? Stupid weather. (laughs) Are you complaining again? Do you realize you spend all your time complaining? Anybody know a complainer, at least one complainer? Don't look at your wife. Don't look at your husband. Lift your hand if you know a complainer. Come on. You know one, okay. And here's what Linus says. Watch this. She says, why shouldn't I complain? It's the only thing I'm really good at. (laughs) And my friend Linus again. (laughs) What do you think you'd like to be when you grow up? Outrageously happy. That's mine right there. I want to be outrageously happy. We got to change our perspective. Jesus is not going to change his. You and I are the ones to move forward. Amen? Here's what the Word says. He sends forth His Word, heals them, rescues them from a pit and destruction. You and I don't have to live in calamity. We don't have to live piled with dead and sickness. We can get out of it. But you have to change the Word intake and your words and how you act on the Word. Quit saying, I just feel so bad. I can't afford the iPhone 13. (laughs) Come on. Get over it. The word says, Jesus entered Capernaum. There came unto him a centurion beseeching this. Watch these words. Saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said, you know what? I'll come in healing. But listen to the boldness of of a leader. Who says this? The centurion answered, Lord, I'm not worthy that you come unto my house, but speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. Now, two or three things. Number one, he saw the authority that Jesus had. And he saw the authority that what he needed to do was get an agreement. You speak the word, and my servant will be healed. You're gonna, if you're going to have a future, you've got to quit being the way you were yesterday. You've got, you got to move forward. You've got to get in line and become a follower of Jesus, okay? Well, I just don't like going to church. I don't like that. You know, get over it. If you're going to get along with God, you've got to deal with how he deals with things. He is not a Democrat nor a Republican. Amen. It is God and him alone. Amen. He has a way of doing things. He simply said, follow me. You don't follow him on your own per se. You have to get around, folks, because we sharpen one another. Aren't you glad somebody smiles at you when you walk in? They don't say, what are you doing here? (laughs) Who let you in? (laughs) Can I take you somewhere for a moment, and then we'll wrap this at some jump-off place here. The entrance and unfolding of your words gives light. That's what happens when you get around the Word. It gives understanding, discernment, and comprehension to the simple. I'm not calling, nor was David calling you simple. But if you'll get the Word on your inside, you'll learn more than you know now. And more than that, you'll learn to grow up. Now, I have a propensity. I love saying that word. It's a good (laughs) word, propensity, for helping people grow up. Now... I know the soil has got to be right. you got to decide, I want to grow. But here's the thing. You get the right seed in you, and you can't help but grow. And the seed of love, the seed of His Word, the seed of hope, the seed of faith in you, and you will start seeing differently. You won't walk around with just like this, high. You know, you will really relate to people. I don't care who it is walks up to you and starts talking about Jesus. You're like, yeah, tell me more. Amen? That's what disciples do. Now, watch this. If we're going to grow, we've got to decide to, to 
know that the roots have to have something permanent to be in. You've got to grow in the Lord. I shared part of this last week. If you're going to grow your faith, move it upward, you're going to have to decide God intends us to grow regardless of stuff around us. Isn't that a beautiful tree? Well, look where it grew. Think you can make a difference? Look what a mere seed can do. I showed you this last week. How about this? It's hard to grow your faith inside of your comfort zone. You got to get out. You got to decide, Pastor Rosella, I'm going to stretch my border. 12 years ago for you, when did Howard leave? 12, 10, 11? Her husband took off to heaven 11 years ago. 13, I'm sorry. <laughs> she did not, I'm, I'm not, listen, this woman is powerful, but she didn't know how to put a gas throttle hose in the car and pump gas. Nor did you do finances, did you? No finances. Didn't write checks, paychecks, no. Credit cards only, yeah, that's right. All women love credit cards. Can I have an amen, ladies? Amen. amen. My wife deals out, uh, lets me have certain credit cards, and she writes big letters. This is what this credit card can be used for. You know me? I got a credit card. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to get out of your comfort zone. Pastor Rosella got out of her comfort zone. She went and bought a car a couple of weeks ago again. You traded one in, didn't you? Negotiated? Nope, that's what I want. Nope, nope, nope. I can do it. <laughs> if you're going to be rude, you need to put your roots down deep. You, you, you think there might be a problem going on. Turn it upside down and look. Now, look at this. Isn't this a beautiful tree? There's no reason you can't grow after even experiencing drama. Trauma. Drama. Can I show you something? Hello? I don't care what you've gone through. Don't let it hold you back. You've got a great future. Amen. Glory to God. That blesses me right there. Have faith for your future. Amen. Let me see, Miss Charity. Take me over, if you would, um, to um, 96 there. Thank you. Culture. Since my college days, <laughs> that was a magazine during my college days, Is God Dead? <laughs> what a ridiculous statement. <laughs> Somebody that's alive and can see the sun and the moon saying, Is God Dead? Hello. In my college days, things have changed since then. The magazine, Nietzsche said, In 1883, God is dead. <laughs> God in 1900 said, Nietzsche is dead. <laughs> the Jesus movement, which Cheryl and Daph and I and many of you in here were raised in, they used to call us Jesus freaks. We had hats then. I mean, hair then. But now I just wear a hat where I had hair, you know. So, yeah. But all of those things have changed. We've moved past. And right now, the culture is still going it's all about me. No, it's not. When God blesses you, finish it for me. When God blesses you, he's got He's got more than you on his mind. And you have to get out of your comfort zone and decide God wants to do something. Now, I'll close it with this today. This morning, I, I do a little morning thing. Uh, some of you right along with me, but it's somewhere between 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning. I get on my prayer balcony. I, I, I pray, and then I get some unction on my inside. And this morning, I got bothered because the culture is tearing up everything. Canada's gone nuts, you know? trying to be a dictator. And then, you know, the Russia, Ukraine thing, and our government's not doing what they should do. They offered the guy a ride out of there the other day, the president of Ukraine. He's not leaving town. It's like when George and uh, Terry Pearson's called us during the, one of the 
uh, hurricanes. And uh, they called Miss Cheryl and said, you are getting out of town, aren't you? And Miss Cheryl, well, heavens no. No, no boat captain, no, he doesn't leave the ship. Our people are here. Our sheep are here. We're not leaving town, you know. And that's the way we should be, amen. Well, the culture right now is saying that this government knows how to decide everything for you. How many of you have extra mask with you today? Did you wear it in? I'm about to put up a sign, no mask allowed. <laughs> but we think that the way government is against the church now is the, is the worst ever. It is not. How many of you know when Jesus left, he left it in a mess in terms of what the government was doing to Christians. Do y'all ever heard the guy, the name Saul? What do we first read about? About a guy named Stephen. Thank God he spelled it with a P-H and not a V-E-N. I don't want that heritage. But they were stoning him and, and Saul, Paul was there. They were killing Christians. And we're getting upset. We rightly are getting upset because of martyrs and because of circumstances where nations are being, you know, riddled with doubt and unbelief and they're killing Christians. No question about it. But the government has always tried to shut up Christians. Now here's a scripture that I came to this morning in reading Acts 4. You need to read the whole chapter, but this took the, the passion version of a few verses here. So uh, um, <laughs> I think it's... Uh, let me get it again for you. Let me read this one part here real quick. Uh, there we go. Are y'all getting anything? Are you okay? All right, stay with me. Don't go out the door. <laughs> oh, there we go. Back one. Thank you. Here. <laughs> I love this. So Peter and John were out preaching. And things were happening. Some of y'all have been out witnessing, right? Hopefully. Statistically, George Barner says, less than 1% of Christians wins one person to Jesus a year. Let it not be so at Word of Faith Family Church. Less than 1% witnesses and win somebody to the Lord in a year. Everybody say, oh me. So they were out doing that and praying for people. People were getting saved. People were being born again. People were getting healed. Verse 18 says, they brought him into the council and were upset at him because the guy got healed. And he was over 40 years of age. He walked in and said, I'm, I'm healed. They brought them back into the council and they commanded them to never teach the people or speak again using the name of Jesus. Does that sound like any governmental effort going on to you? I mean, some people have commented, well, why are y'all doing some things about politics? Aren't we supposed to be separate? No! If you're going to live in this culture, you have to deal with politics. And you have to deal with authority. Particularly when that authority is wrong. You, we, the nation, are in charge. The school board can't tell parents how to raise their kids. But they are. Grandparents, you ought to be mad. Okay. So it goes on, the next part of the verse says, But Peter and John replied, You can judge for yourselves. Is it better to listen to you or to God? It's impossible for us to stop speaking about all the things that we've seen and heard. Since the members of the council couldn't come up with a crime they could punish them for, they threatened them once more and let them go. I want to tell you, it's time for us to be bold. And the, the issue of what our future is like is because we do become bold and we, we, we get engaged in what God's doing and suddenly we find, hey, this, this is more fun than I ever thought it could be. 
And we, we infect, affect people. And that's what we need. Our, your neighbors, your relatives need you to be radical. I know some of them won't come around until they need to borrow a hundred dollars, but come on. You know, they will come back around. And because you're prosperous, don't loan it to them. Give it to them. Amen. Well, they'll keep coming back. Well, you know where you got that hundred dollar bill, I hope. Right? Be a blessing to them. Amen. So the great witness, oh, well, that's what I wanted to make that point, yes. The Great Commission actually justifies our existence on earth. We are to be witnesses of salt and light. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Everybody gets your praise on.